These MBS are all in the water. We already had a bank go through fail because of this earlier this year. All the banks have the same problem. What's up, guys? I'm Nobody Special, and we are very lucky today. Back in the channel for the second time, we have got Kirian Deso Games Von Hest. Kirian, how you doing today, brother? I'm doing okay. They're uh, finally done with the noise outside, scratching the concrete off of the apartment building because, you know, the floor had to be renewed. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's always fun to have that going on right outside your window. Now, mm. Kirian, you put something on Twitter yesterday, and I don't think it got nearly enough attention. It, it was really some amazing stuff that you found. A little bit of setting here, folks. I had Kirian on the channel last May. And I'm going to put a link down in the description to the videos I made out of that interview. And back in May, you did you 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 pulled the Dr. Burry. You opened up the MBB ETF, which is an ETF that invests in mortgage-backed securities. All right, it, it's a it's a an ETF made up of mortgage bonds that are made up of mortgages. And you looked in there at all the bonds that were in there, and you noticed something real quick. Give me the the short version of what you found when you looked inside the MBB is actually two years ago that you found it. We talked about it last year. Uh, yeah. So in March, uh, two and a half years, in March of 2021, I noticed that MBB had already fallen back to its pre COVID lows and it was at the height of the housing bubble. Now MBB was a triple a rated ETF at the time. And I found that weird. How come that AAA credit is already back at pre-COVID uh, prices when uh, LQD and HYG and, you know, junk credit was well above uh, pre-COVID uh, prices? So I started looking and the short of it is, we'll go through it uh, in the video, is that I found a couple of bonds in MBB with a particular name that indicated that they were not triple A credit at all. I would rather rate them around triple B, which since I specialize in patterns of behavior, immediately told me that all the bonds of the which had names I couldn't read, what incentives do they have to provide better credit if I have no chance of finding out what's in there? It's basically a question of somebody screwed up they put names in the ETF that I could actually read under the supplemental information, not the actual, the supplemental information. And that le led me to conclude that what they did in 2008, they just did again. They rated shit as AAA. So they actually put in the name of the bonds information suggesting they were not AAA rated, which, you know, is uh, I made the analogy while we were talking is like the accountant for the criminal organization writing criminal proceeds on the folder. You know, that might've been your first mistake there. And that led you to suggest, hey guys, there's not, this stuff is not as risk-free as they're advertising. So you were foreshadowing a downgrade. Now yes. let's fast forward to yesterday and I'm gonna share my screen with you because you tweeted out this yesterday, got my attention right away. Thank you for tagging me in this, by the way. Mm. And I saw this and I, I remember saying, whoa, you said massive alert. The entirety of MBB has been downgraded from AAA to AA. Credit quality matters again. Don't know mm -hmm. exactly when, but here's a screenshot of the current page and from my files in April of 2022. I'm going to show you the screenshots that you included. We'll start with this first one here. What is it we're looking at in this image here, which I love the joke that you made in here, by the way. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not a joke, but we'll get to that moment. Well, it's what I said earlier. It's I clicked on the link and I looked at what's in the damn ETF. More people should have done that. But what we're actually, actually looking at is a screenshot I cobbled together from investing.com with a chart and the actual product page with the link of the iShares MBB uh, ETF. Um, it, it says MBS ETF because there's mortgage-backed securities in the ETF. So, so for, uh, Real quick, for the people who don't, get the joke when you said click here to be michael j burry pointing to the holding supplemental information explain a the, little bit about what the joke burry is that nobody would click the joke right. is that i could literally point at it say click here to just be michael burry to be the main star of the big short and i'm willing to bet almost nobody clicked on that link to actually look to actually check at what's in 
in there, yeah. right? To to know what you're buying. Yes. So if and, I sound kind kind of you know done with this, shit, it'll be that that'll be the reason because you know I've lived it now. But the important part is below that where it clearly says triple A rated under the exposure breakdowns as of April 11th, 2022. Yeah, 98.11% AAA rated and then everything else in the ETF was cash. Mm -hmm. So it was all pristine collateral, if you will. It was all AAA rated, no risk here. Best yeah, of the same, best. Same stuff that's on the balance sheet of the banks, which is why I was so interested in it because I know the banks have this because the Fed rates it as pristine collateral, as you said. Now let's fast forward to the next screenshot that you took. This is to yesterday's information. And what mm -hmm. are we seeing here? Well, as of the 2nd of October, 2023, the entire fund is double A rated. Uh, cash and derivatives, you see the ratio has changed a little bit. That's okay because, you know, it's an actively managed fund that gets rebalanced. New bonds get bought and sold all the time. So that's fine. But uh, clearly what was almost entirely AAA is now entirely AA rated. Yeah. So the, everything in the ETF, this is the largest mortgage-backed securities ETF in the market. Everything inside of it has been downgraded from AAA to AA. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I never heard anything about this. Did you hear anything about this? Nope. Well, we have speculated that it's most likely due due to uh, the downgrade of the U.S. by Fitch ratings. And sure. as that uh, uh, other screenshot said, uh, these ratings are taken from BlackRock. And if a bond has three ratings from three agencies, they'll take the median. But if they only has two ratings from two agencies, they'll take the lower one. Okay. So, uh, yes. And the U.S. credit rating now has two out of three have been downgraded, Dallas. haven't they? Yep. So that could be a culprit. Yeah. So we had August 1st, Fitch downgraded the U.S. credit rating from AAA to AA, AA+. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, interestingly enough, a day later, we also got this one on August 2nd, Fitch downgrades Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to AA+, following yes. the downgrade of the government's credit rating, basically saying here, hey, the government implicitly guarantees all the Fannie and Freddie mortgages. Well, if we downgraded the implicit guarantee, then I guess we have to downgrade Fannie and Freddie. Mm -hmm. Now, you made a pretty good comment on this. If this is, in fact, the culprit, what does that really say about the credit rating of the average homeowner, the average mortgage borrower in the United States? It says that there's so much shit in these bonds that none of them rely on anybody who's AAA rated. Not a single one. And it goes down to a, a double decimal uh, accuracy. So, you know, it should show up as 0.01% at the very least. You know, if there were individual bonds in here instead of securities, then some of them would still be AAA rated because they rely on the credit rating of the person who took them. And not everyone, not literally everyone in the States has bad credit. Except but that's not that, what this says, right? This is saying everybody is now double A rated. Yes. And that's because 2008 happened, but nobody learned anything. The now, ratings agencies, we... yeah, the ratings agencies uh, just want to finish this. They just never got punished for rating shit as triple A. Uh, they sliced uh, and the, the banks sliced triple a mortgages which still exist with a lot of crap in order to be able to sell them as triple a because diversified and they kept doing it so all those securities even if they have triple a bonds in them are not actually triple a because there's too much shit. there's too much garbage in them now you also noticed uh you brought up a chart uh, we're looking on this chart. This is the iShares in blue. There is the MBB ETF that we're talking about. That's the mortgage-backed securities ETF that's made up of residential mortgages issued by Fannie, Freddie, government-sponsored enterprises. Now, the purple line, that is the CMBS ETF, which is made up of commercial mortgage-backed securities. Now, we're going all the way back to about September of last year here on this chart. 
And this is the relative performance. So this is showing that MBB is actually underperforming commercial real estate right now. Yes, and it has done so since approximately the downgrade of the U.S. Right here at the end of July, right? This is July 31st, this data point here. And that's when the spread between the two really started to open up. It was right when the downgrade of the U.S. credit rate, rating happened. And, and MBB has done terribly ever since. CMBS is better rated now because it used to be 88% triple A rated and now it's 56% triple A rated. But that's still better than completely double A rated. Therefore, it's now higher credit rated than a mortgage backed security ETF. The best mortgage backed security ETF. Wow. So that that was a, a really powerful statement you just made. I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind that and restate it and tell me if I'm getting wrong or add to it here, okay? Because People have to understand that commercial real estate, which is widely considered to be the most toxic asset class in the world right now because of offices and retail. Obviously, commercial real estate has a mountain of problems there, and we're seeing it in real time. But the best rated residential mortgage-backed security ETF is doing worse than that. Yep. And home prices still have not budged. Well, they've fallen a bit. The median house price is down from a peak of like 475,000 to 414,000. But it's not even comparable to like the 300,000 it was before. Like we're still right. a little bit off the peak. That doesn't even take into account all the inflation that's happened, all the extra costs that people have in cost of living, uh, stuff like property taxes that have gone massively up and nobody's talking about... Uh, you know, videos on TikTok of people making 80, 90 K a year, but they can't even support the family anymore. So how are they going to buy all those overpriced houses for even higher prices? At, at these, at the, uh, at eight, the mortgage rates as they are now about 8%, because you know, the uh, more bond yields go up, the higher the mortgages go. The median house price that 416 K that I just mentioned if you have a below 660 FICO score or a 665 around there and you're paying 8%, you're paying 3000 a month on that. Just principal and interest, not even taxes and PMI that's, and everything else. That's just your mortgage. Wow. So that's uh, 36K a year. The median house price, not mean, median, not average, median. So you take out the lowest 20 and the top 20, and that's about the center. You average that out. So I, I don't know how to know how the more expensive houses cost right now. Housing market's dead. It's never going to come back. I mean, this you need is, a Great Depression. This is so just outright damning of the housing market here to see. And again, this purple line that is doing better, that is we were. what a lot of people think is a bubble. So... Well, no, it's, it won't actually be WeWork bonds in there. But once WeWork goes bust, and we all know it will, obviously all the other commercial mortgage-backed securities will be worth less because there will be a wealth of new properties on the market at bottom prices. And if everything is worth less and everything is less credit and rates go up further, it's a domino effect. Well, I mean, yeah, you've got WeWork in the commercial real estate sector, and then you've got Airbnbs and Verbos that have just wrought havoc across the country in the the real the residential real estate sector. All these gig economy, gimmicky unicorn companies that drove up real estate prices—they're all going bust right now, and they're all just going to result in this sudden dumping of supply onto an illiquid market. Doesn't take a genius to know where that's going. Nope. Now let's talk a little bit here. We're going to change my screen share. I, I want to get a little bit into the logic of how you discovered this problem to begin with. Let me share a different screen and, you know, you're not going to be able to see it too well, but I'll, I'll use some images in post-production to make it a little easier to see. Hmm. Well, first of all, let me show you how we got there. I got to bring this back up now. How did <laughs> we get there? We went to the iShares website. Okay. This is, this is the iShares MBS ETF website. We're going to scroll all the way up here. All right. When you search, MBB, the iShares Mortgage-Backed Securities ETF, this is where you get to. 
All right, showing here's the fund's performance, year-to-date, net asset value, all that stuff. Now, walk me through, how did you get to the 660 FICO scores that were hidden in here? Scroll down. It's a long page. All this data that everybody just, yeah, sure, check the box. I have read and understand. Just shut up and take my money, right? That's what everybody does when Hold they it. buy this stuff. Did that I works. go past it already? Yeah, yeah. There, oh, there's still more on the page, but there it is. <laughs> Did I find it? Where is it? Below holdings. Okay, holdings. Here we go. And then here we go, right? It was supplemental information? Yes. All right. So not, we're going to click the on... detailed, Not the detailed holdings and analytics. No, the holdings, supplemental information. So not you didn't even go to just the first gigantic spreadsheet well, attached. Of course I did. Up. Of course I did. I okay. clicked everything. And then you went to the second one after you were done with that. Yeah, well, of course. That's what it means to look. You, you click things, you know, open a page and you're like, oh, well, my eyes have received information. I'm done now. <laughs> yeah, okay, you click so, things. So let's assume I clicked on that. Now I got to go to my other, my other screen share here. And we mm -hmm. are going to share that, what that actually brings up. All right. So here is the supplemental information on the iShares website for the MBB ETF. All right. Now I've got a whole bunch of letters and numbers on my screen. I don't know what any of this stuff means. Help me, no, help me make the details of it. Scroll all the way to the top because you zoomed in a bit. Yep, all the way to the top here. Well, it says exactly what that does. A date, name, ticker, QSIP. Oh, we know what a QSIP is. It's the identifier of the bond. Country, position amount, market value. And none of this is very hard to understand. But what we're interested in is the name. Now, you look at any names on that page there. It doesn't tell you anything, right? GNMA, 30-year, 3.5, LLB. Well, you can uh, deduct some information from it. Uh, clearly, the rate from it, uh, it was made in 2012. It probably is like 85, uh, around 85K mortgages or something, 85K left, probably. I don't know. Maybe that's loan to value. That's also often in the title. None of that's important. What's important is that in America... Credit goes by FICO scores. Uh, so let's so, do a control F, FICO. Let's see what comes up when we do that. All right, we got a couple of things just came up. We got a hit. Yeah, oh, we got, a, we got a couple of hits here. All right, I'm now looking at GNMA, which we think that was like Ginny May or something, the name of the issuer. Uh, government backed in any case. Yep, 30-year. 3%, so that's for a 30-year mortgage, 3% interest rate. FICO, less than 660, 2012. What does this yeah. mean? What's what's going on here? Well, I think it means exactly what it says that it means. So the question becomes, and you tell me this, is the FICO score below 660 AAA rated? Mm. Now, I have no, to look this not. up as well. I, I'm Dutch. I'm not an American. I Googled it. Because that's what looking up means. And it says that FICO scores go up to 850-ish. Now, I don't even need to know how the divisions are. But if I've got 850 on the high end and I see like 550 at the low end, 660 is not in the middle. No, it is not. So it's below average credit. And certainly not triple A. And remember, this up until what we suspect was August or around that time frame, this was 98.9. This was all AAA rated. No, and forget AAA rated. It's still AA rated. Do you think below 660 and FICO score is AA? No. Try, no. If you've got a 660 credit score, go try to get a mortgage right now and see if the bank thinks, that, <laughs> thinks you're low risk. <laughs> yeah. It's more like triple B or double B around there. It's like a half a notch above subprime. So it's still badly rated. It's still like two, three notches above where it's supposed to be. And as I said, I specialize in patterns of behavior. The people who have been staring at this in a while will see that the amounts listed per bond won't be enough to break uh, MBB. It's like 10 million there, 12 million there. All in all, there'll be like 200 million. It's a little lost they can suffer. But what I mean to say is that if I can't read the name, if the name doesn't say anything to me, what is their incentive to put better credit in there than from this where I can actually read the name and I'm saying, like, this shouldn't be in there? 
if they've got more opportunity to hide it, do you think they will be more honest? Yeah. And, no. and just to paint a picture of the scale here, guys, that was just one. All right. Now we have got dozens of hits here, dozens of hits. Now there's about a dozen or so that say FICO under 660, but there's about another two dozen or so that say FICO less than 700, which is also not AAA rated. And, you know, let's imagine we open the filing cabinet at the gangster's office. You open the filing cabinet, there's hundreds of folders in there, and 10 of them say proceeds from criminal enterprise. Does that mean all of the other folders don't have proceeds from criminal enterprise, or is it just me? They didn't write it in the headline. They didn't write it on the name of the folder. And even worse, the dates on these things. Everything, well, not everything. There's uh, like three or four bonds in there still. There's a little, like holdovers. But pretty much everything got put in there after the global financial crisis. 2013, 14, 15, 17, 18. Well, I don't, don't know. Yeah, there's an 18 in there. Yeah. So that's clearly a pattern of behavior. Somebody keeps buying these things and keeps putting them in there. And I know why. Because they never got punished for the exact same behavior that led to the great, great financial crisis and this was Clear, 2012 yeah. 2013 the gfc was still fresh in everybody's mind at this point we were most people hadn't recovered yet and they they waited what three years and started doing the same thing mm. and you can call these clos instead of cdos that doesn't matter i've looked at the structure they're practically the same thing only CLOs are more complex, so they can hide their bull risk taking better. And I mean, look right here, October third, twenty twenty three, or that's today's date. You've got a GNMA thirty year four and a half percent interest rate on a mortgage for a FICO score less than six hundred and sixty for a mortgage that was taken out in twenty seventeen. Or right here, five percent. Mortgage rate for a 660 FICO score, less than 660. So for all we know, it's 500 in 2017. And that was AAA rated. That was put into a AAA rated bond. Yeah, and the, funny th the funny thing is that particular mortgage isn't even that much of a problem because it's 5% rated. Look at the one that's 3% rated. 3.5. Uh, currently the top row. Okay. The 3% rated below 660, 2013. You go a little bit more to the right, you'll start seeing numbers. There's about 15 million there, and then you see uh, 1,335. The first one is the value when they bought it. The second one is the market value in thousands. That bond is about, what, 10, 20% underwater? Wow. Add three zeros to that, to the 13,000. Uh, Yep, down about 20%. And why? Not because of the credit rating. That hasn't even happened yet. Because that requires a recession. That requires people to lose their jobs, their income. And then they can't pay a 3% mortgage anymore. You know? It's not that... Well, everyone's fixed rate. So if you want them to suffer because of higher mortgages, you need them to take out a new mortgage. Because their old fixed rate isn't... That's actually becoming easier to pay. Because, you know, inflation, your income is also going up, but your fixed rate mortgage is staying exactly the same. So the, the credit quality so far hasn't become a problem yet. The fact that we've now downgraded from triple A AAA to double A and we're looking at a giant recession that is going to cause people to lose their jobs. And that's what the Fed is trying to create. That is going to eventually lead to, you know, what we saw in 2008. But what the problem here is right now is that these bonds, these ones, are on somebody's balance sheet. They're underwater on somebody's balance sheet. And what I want to stress to people that in the grand scheme of things, MBB doesn't matter that much. MBB is a symptom of the disease. Banks have got residential mortgages on their balance sheet. They're not mortgages. They're MBS. These MBS are all in the water. We already had a bank of true fail because of this earlier this year. All the banks have the same problem. Mm. There's a few that are interest rate hedged, like, but then there's banks that are selling these interest rate hedges. It's a question that somebody has to take the loss. 
I've detailed on Twitter uh, Comerica in the past because Comerica is one of these banks that have sold these interest rate hedges. And they're losing quite a bit of money on them now. And they're stuck with them for at least four, four and a half years because that's the average maturity on the derivatives. Wow. So these things, again, MBB, it's not a huge ETF. But if this is the stuff that is lurking in MBB, we've got garbage FICO scores, formerly rated AAA. Now they've finally been downgraded, not because anybody's bothering to look at the mortgage bonds. No, they just the ratings agency just did a blanket downgrade, I'm, I'm assuming because of the U.S. government's downgrade. So still nobody's really looked other than you. And now people who are watching this, do the banks have any idea what they're sitting on? Do, yes do the no. bank shareholders know? I mean, obviously they know they're being criminals. They're not going to tell us, but they have to know by now that they're not caring and nobody has to care. Like they, they're they basically operating under the, the expectation that they will be bailed out again if the great financial crisis happens ever again. And, you know, Everyone is operating on that ex uh, expectation because that's literally what happened last time. And it's most likely what will happen next time because they can't allow this market to fail. It's like what they said at the end of the big short. They weren't being stupid. They knew. They know they're going to get bailed out. This is MBB will still crash. These bonds are worth not nearly as much as they say they do. Banks balance sheets will still crash. The last time that happened this year. The Fed created a new program and printed uh, more than $100 billion, just like that. The bank term funding program, right? They, Instead of being forced to sell those assets when the Fed knew they wouldn't get what they had them on their balance sheet for, the Fed just printed money into existence and they said, loan us those things. We'll, we'll borrow them. You know, We'll do a repurchase agreement or whatever it was. Park them on our balance sheet. We'll give you face value for them in the short term. You got to pay us back a year from now. And it it's allowed them to, to access that liquidity without selling. It's just a band-aid because they're charging an interest rates on these emergency loans. Where's the interest rate expense going to come from if the rates are still going up? Yeah. How are you going to charge a broke bank more money? I mean, I, I would challenge the band-aid. It's more of a tourniquet. The second you take it off, the bleeding's just going to resume. You didn't plug the hole. You, you just mm. sacrificed the limb. It's not a tourniquet even. It's just a blood bag. Somebody's got a gunshot and they're just pumping more blood in it than he loses at per second. So technically, he stays alive. Everything becomes a mess, but <laughs> he stays alive. Some grisly metaphors here, folks, but they're accurate. Yeah, and then the Fitch comes around, gives him another sh gunshot. Now it's a double A rated body. Good luck. Get another blood bag. Now, I referred to a, an article this morning in my live stream that said, get ready for 8% mortgages from their coming because they're coming. And they made a reference to the fact that the yield spreads between the U.S. 10-year treasury and the 30-year mortgage, as the 10-year is rising, the 30-year mortgage rate is rising faster. The banks are getting more defensive. They're issuing fewer loans. And they said one of the reasons that they suspect this is happening is because banks are having a hard time finding investors with an appetite for mortgage-backed securities. There are no buyers for these things. And I want to refer you to this chart. This is the Federal Reserve's mortgage-backed securities holdings based on the St. Louis Fred. Now, supposedly, the Federal Reserve is unwinding their balance sheet of mortgage-backed securities at about half the rate that they're unwinding their U.S. Treasury holdings. Now, according to the Fred's website, they've unloaded about $703 billion of U.S. Treasuries since they started this QT experiment. But they've only unloaded $206 billion, I'm sorry, $260 billion of mortgage-backed securities. So they are way off pace. They're not keeping up with their goal of how fast they could unload these mortgage-backed securities. They're rolling off the balance sheet slower than they're telling us they're going to do because they're having a hard time finding buyers of these things without crashing the prices and thus driving the interest rates even higher. Mm -hmm. What does this tell you about the state of the bond market about this, is this stuff just going to live perpetually on the Federal Reserve balance sheet or is somebody going to end up holding this bag? Besides well, us? No, uh, if you assume that the mortgages will still be paid within 30 years, each individual bond will just roll off the balance sheet automatically because the mortgage will be paid off. 
assuming nothing happens to it, of course. But what is most likely to happen is that this is just a temporary blip in a much larger mountain that's going to come the moment the market crashes. And, and just, we know exactly when that's going to happen, too. Just to put that in perspective, folks, you know, this looks like, oh, yeah, they're they're almost down to zero. No, not even close. You got to look at the scale. And for the scale, we're going to zoom all the way out to, like, say, 2005 here. Now you have a better idea of what the holdings of mortgage-backed securities actually looks like on the Fed's balance sheet. Here's the response to the GFC. They bought up all that stuff. QE1, a few years later, QE2, QE3. Oh, they bought even more. There's 2012, the first, the second hill. That's when the FICA scores got added. Okay. We run up again. We buy hundreds of billions more. Now 2017, oh, and, 2018. And uh, just, just a little uh, side note here. If you're a bank with mortgage-backed securities and the Fed is a willing buyer, but it doesn't buy everything you have on the balance sheet, what do you sell first? Your good shit or your bad shit? Oh, I'm going to sell the Fed my most toxic, god-awful... <laughs> Exactly. Well, just wanted worst, to make that right? note. I'm not going to sell the good stuff first. No, please continue. And the Fed's obviously not looking. Um, I, I doubt the Fed did what you did and opened up the spreadsheet and looked. No. So we saw, okay, now we're the second the attempt. are going down here, right? Yeah, that was uh, the second attempt at QT. Yeah, that didn't go so well. Along comes the pandemic. j Powell go burr, and this thing oh. goes vertical. We have to note that if the pandemic hadn't happened, this would have happened anyway, because by the time March 2020 rolled around, they were already they were a month away from stopping their temporary repo operations, which meant 60 billion of QE a month since September of 2020, uh, 2019. So they were already six months deep in QE by the time the pandemic hit. And you can see that here on the chart of yes. the actual fed's balance sheet the total balance sheet you can see it started in september of 2019 with repo madness that's when the fed started buying up debt assets again so you, i agree with you 100 percent Kieran. the fed would have started buying those mbs's right around the time of the pandemic anyway that you know the pandemic came along at a very convenient time for the bankers let's put it that way and now here's all this qt here's all the efforts to fight inflation since 2021 what was it march of 2022 supposedly this started uh, they, they started in june they started raising rates around march but they did qt in june well they, right. they they stopped buying in june and then in september they added to how much they rolled over so okay. it was a bit of a hill and now all this qt this is all they've managed to unwind and you're you're right it's going to take them 30 years just people making their mortgage payments to actually unwind this they're not selling any of these bonds because nobody's going to buy them they're just letting people pay their mortgages back and that's why this chart is dropping everything that's happened so far is just because the fed didn't buy as much as it used to that goes for government yields as well by the way wow and the only reason the only reason they can still maintain this is because of rp let's go to that chart reverse repos overnight reverse repos here we go yeah, what that's lost about here? a trillion. Yeah. And since when did they about lose a trillion? Now, we we had this conversation before. You're saying this started right around April is when you're saying the reverse repo started to drop. And you, you can see that's when the chart rolls over, right? Mm-hmm. Right around about, April. About, a, 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 yeah, the start of May, end of April. Uh, ever since then, we've lost a trillion. Now, what's significant about that April timestamp? SVB, Silicon that Valley in March, the buy the fucking dip program. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> now, also note, uh, let's look at the Fed's balance sheet because what happened to the Fed's balance sheet right around that time in April? Let's zoom in a little closer here. Right, right, right in between that March and April time frame. There's your BTFP, that big spike in the Fed's balance sheet. Now, give the chaos a little time to work itself out, you know? It doesn't have to exactly line up. It's pretty right. close. So I, I think we've pretty well established that there is just a mess in the mortgage-backed security market right now, that the stuff is – we've made the same mistakes that we made in the GFC. It's the lady from the Big Short with the giant cataract glasses on <laughs> all over again. They quietly downgraded – 
all of this stuff, presumably, we don't know for sure, but presumably sometime around the U.S. credit rating downgrade, which would imply that your credit doesn't really matter. It's really all just the government backing up everything. Which brings uh, the government bonds into question, which uh, is why we pulled up RRP, because the moment RRP runs out of money, the government can no longer sterilize its deficit spending because the RRP is sanitizing both the Treasury general account refill as well as the Fed's QT, meaning that the Treasury bonds and the mortgage-backed securities that are being rolled off the Fed's balance sheet are being bought up by money that was previously in RRP. Now, don't ask me about the mechanics of that. It's all very complex. There's many people that try to explain it, but I just observe what I see happening in reality. And I see, you know, after SVB, RRP taking a massive dip. I see uh, RRP making a, a 500 billion crash when the TGA goes up 500 billion. I can put one on one together. I don't need somebody to complicate this for me. So TGA, that's the Treasury General account. That is Janet Yellen sucking liquidity out of the bond market, right? Refilling well, after the debt ceiling debacle was behind us. Janet Yellen had to refill Uncle Sam's checking account, so she borrowed hundreds of billions of dollars. Well, and she didn't that suck liquidity. What's no, that? She, didn't she didn't suck liquidity out of the bond market. That's what the RRP is telling you. None of the liquidity from the TGA came from the bond market. Not one drop. Everything came from RRP. And what is the money in RRP? That is the excess money they printed during COVID and they had to pull out of the market in an emergency because it was creating inflation. So we're not seeing bond market liquidity dry up. The bond market liquidity, then you're saying, is already gone. This everything is just that's RRP happening drying up. The everything that's happening to yields right now, you know, the spike to 4.8%. None of that has anything to do with what we've just talked about. That is just the additional issuance that the U.S. government is issuing right now that the market has to absorb and RP isn't absorbing. You know, it's the excess. Right. It's the little bit of water that's flowing over the edge of the dam, not what's behind the dam. And the dam is cracking. When is the dam going to crack? When this chart hits zero. Because then there's no more excess money to uh, sanitize our, uh, the bonds. Then all of the issuance has to be carried by the bond market. And China selling bonds. There was the report today that uh, the current yield is driven by China selling bonds. Saw Japan that. is going to sell bonds. It hasn't even started yet. But the uh, the yen is at 150 USD per uh, no 150 yen per USD. While their 10-year just passed 0.8%, which is huge because they've got 1.5 quadrillion worth of yen debt. So they have to start selling U.S. treasuries and their other forex reserves to start defending the yen and buying the bonds back to control yields, which is going to be bad for treasuries. So if China is selling and Japan is selling and Germany is who's going to buy these damn bonds? Again, $2 trillion deficit. You look at countries with $2 trillion GDP, you're not even going to find that many. So, so you've got the government, right? The government is throwing money out the window, CHIPS Act, Inflation Reduction Act, deficits, all these mandatory programs. There's this big bowl right next to them here. Reach in the bowl, they grab a few billion, they throw it out the window. They reach in the bowl, they grab a few million, they throw it out the window. The bowl is the bond market, the reverse repo. It's all the money that's available to, to borrow. When that reverse repo gets to zero, the government reaches in the ball and there's nothing there. Now what happens? They're going to ask the market for candy. The market is going to charge them. Interest rates will explode. You hear people talking about 10, 20 percent. Fuck that. 100 percent is easy. It just depends. It depends on how broke America really is. I'm telling you, America's, America just spent, lent $275 billion in a day. The U.S. national debt went up from 33.14 to 33.44 billion. I said 250. There's a 50 billion dollar difference there. It was a few days ago. That's how fast this is going. A quarter of a trillion in a day. In a day. Yeah, in a day. yeah. it's 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 mind blowing how fast. This I have checked U.S. debt clock multiple times a year. Before at the start of the year, we were below 100 trillion. We're at 103. Total debt. You know? Now, folks, 
in the 1980s, we used to, before the 80s, 50s, 60s, 70s, we used to just, like New York City, they'd put all their garbage on a barge. They'd sail it down the Hudson out into the ocean, and they would just dump the garbage. And the ocean was this giant hole that could never be filled. Hmm. And we did that for decades. And it turned out you can fill that giant hole. That eventually that garbage does w wash up on your shore. And I'm a kid, grew up in New Jersey. I remember hypo hypodermic needles on the shore washing up on 4th of July. All right. I remember mm -hmm. the birds with the six packs wrapped around their, their necks. All right. You can fill that giant hole. And our fiscal policy has been exactly that same. We have just taken our current economic problems and dumped them into the future in the form of debt spending, pulling future dollars into today. Thinking the we can just do it forever. Modern monetary theory, government deficits don't matter. When we reach into that bowl and there's nothing left, that is the hole is full. And there's nowhere left to dump our problems. And that is when the hypodermic needles wash up on the shore and the whales with the balloons stuck in their blowholes and the birds with the six-pack wrappers wrapped around their necks and the dead sea turtles and everything else. Economically speaking, that is that bird coming home to roost. And we've got one and a half trillion or 1.3 trillion left now, Kirian, in mm -hmm. When at do you, rate, when do you think? Give me a guess. How long is it going to take us to get to zero on that? At, at this rate, six months. Now, past uh, performance, there's no guarantee for future returns. But you see how fast it's going. I mean, this is not going to last a year at this rate. So once that happens, once RP is zero, it's game over. The Fed has to QE. But the moment the Fed QEs, everybody knows what time it is. The dollar is going to die inflation is going to come back. So that's not going to be good for bonds. It's going to be bad for bonds. Yields are going to go up faster. It's not going to be like last time that the bond market obeys the Fed when yields go down and they say it goes down. They didn't control the short end, but they don't control the long end. So if the 10-year continues to spike, he'll just continue to spike. They, they can you know manage that by buying the 10-year, but what you then have is effective yield curve control. And that means that they're printing money to keep the yields suppressed, just like Japan is doing. If it's just like Japan, well, then the dollar is just going to go down. Wow. And that is what happens in every country throughout the entire history. They will sacrifice the currency in order to save the bond market. Because if the government can't lend anymore tomorrow, you go bankrupt immediately. Firefighters will not get paid. Police will not get paid. Army will not get paid. There's so many things that will just not get paid. The senators will get paid because of. I mean, I'm a volunteer firefighter. I don't get paid. So, that, <laughs> but I get the your point. New York the, City, NYFD, right? Those guys don't get paid. You got a big problem. The government shut down what they're threatening with now. That's a laughing stock. Even, even the fing Ukrainians will still get paid during the shutdown. So, what I'm talking about is just pure Armageddon, like a hospital shut down, police fire station shut down. If something burns, it will burn until it's done burning. And that's just how it is. Uh, you, there's nobody you can call in terms of a burglary. The phone number is disconnected because it doesn't exist anymore. Your Medicaid is gone. Your food stamps are gone. All of that is just gone. The, you have no, if, if the U.S. government can't lend anymore, the only option is to pay with taxes and only taxes, only restricted to what you have coming in, which yeah. means the government will need to overnight cut an annual amount of $2 trillion. Now, you can cut your entire discretionary spending uh, budget, which includes the military. You're not going to cut $2 trillion. And I, I've that's, talked that's about this much in the past. Is. Just the act of balancing the federal bu budget, right? Assuming tax revenue doesn't drop, which is not a safe assumption, tax revenue would collapse. But assuming Absolutely. tax revenue stayed the same, assuming no other sector of the economy shrank, just the government spending going back in line with tax revenue would be something about like a seven, seven and a half percent GDP collapse. Now, during the height of the global financial crisis, from peak to trough, U.S. GDP only fell by four and a half percent. So mm. if the government were to balance its its budget which it hasn't even had a budget in decades. So, But if they were to have a budget suddenly and balance it, it would be the worst recession since the Great Depression. And that would be a depression. No other damage to the economy, which is not what would happen. It, this, this is not a little thing, guys. This is here. It's coming. It's months away now that we have conceivably reached that point 
where there is no more money left to borrow. It's coming. And, and you're, you're you're going, going is down there, is not going to save you either. Right now, the U.S. manufacturing is getting a boost because Germany is killing itself, so everybody's going to the U.S. But that that can't save you from currency troubles. You know, Venezuela there, had a oil sector of like three million barrels a day. It's now down to like five hundred thousand, because wow. if the government nationalizes the oil sector and pays them in government money, which is rapidly devaluing, and you can't pay food for food with it anymore, people will just walk off the job. Do you think there's any chance the U.S. government chooses the world reserve currency over the bond market? No. I.e. doesn't print. No. Absolutely not. Because if you kill the currency, you hit two birds with one stone. The bonds are denominated in the currency. So the more currency there is, the less the bond is worth, especially because it's fixed rate. If you're running 10% inflation, but you got a 5% bond, it's worth less 5% every year. Wow. It's that simple. So how do you get rid of an excessive amount of debt? Well, you just print money until the debt is worth nothing, and then you buy it back at pennies on the dollar. So first you get the entire world to buy your debt, and then you devalue that debt so you never have to pay it back with real value. And wouldn't that cost the U.S. the reserve currency status eventually? Yeah, but what's more important, the reserve currency status or complete and utter economic armageddon you know spain doesn't have the world reserve currency anymore and it's doing just fine mm. wow well Karen, this has been a sobering discussion um amazing find on the mbb to 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 go that deep mm. and again everybody just checks the box sure i've read and understand the risks no, none of nobody does you actually go in there, you pull it out, you open it. You, you you open not one, but two enormous, gigantic spreadsheets, and you look at what's in there, and you find the same thing that Burry found, the same thing. And then you spotted, hey, the downgrade happened to no fanfare, that MBB, everything inside it has been downgraded in one fell swoop. Nobody's talking about it. And we're running out of time here. I guess people just accept it. You know, if you're in the industry and you see that uh, Fannie Mae is downgraded and then you think, oh, well, all Fannie Mae bonds are now double A instead of triple A. And that's that's that. But to normal people on the streets, if they would know what this means, you know, that you can now and that they you show them the effects of how commercial more spec securities, which they know is a problem because that's what the news tells them, are now doing better than their own mortgages. Yep. So I think they would want to know. And but folks, think they, about that. You may be a responsible person. You may have a good job. You may have done pretty much everything right. You haven't lived beyond your means, but the country has. And because of what the Congress and what the Fed has done, maybe what this downgrade is saying is that you are now more risky because what is the Fed trying to do right now? They're trying to put people out of work to keep wages from rising. So, yeah. Yeah. Your risk has gone up, even though you're a responsible person, through no fault of your own, because they're trying to socialize the risk of what they did onto you, making you a riskier investment, even though you've never missed a mortgage payment. Now your mortgage bond, the bond that contains your mortgage, has been downgraded because of what the government is going to do to you, put you out of work, maybe not you specifically, but probably 10% of you. Yeah. Put you out of work to the point where you won't be able to pay your mortgage, and now the Try bond 40. containing your mortgage has been devalued. 10% is nothing. Try 40% unemployment. I'm, tr I'm trying to temper my FUD here, Gary, and you're not helping. <laughs> I try not to overdo it sometimes. That would but, be uh, light. I, I'd love to disagree with you. The numbers check out. Look, it's not uh, the individual mortgage you should worry about. The reason why all the mortgages went down at the same time is because the banks are – and that's what I've been trying to tell people for years, that even when your mortgage will be fine, and it's very likely that 95% of people watching this are going to be just fine because you have a 3% or 4% fixed rate mortgage. It doesn't matter that the rates are now at 8 9%. You like where you live. You can keep paying it. And the more the currency devalues, the higher your income becomes, but your mortgage stays exactly the same because it's fixed rate. So, yeah, you have problems with property taxes and such, but that is not the mortgage. 
you know, there will be other stuff that makes it harder to pay, but most people will for the for the longest time, eventually everyone's screwed, but for the longest time, everyone will be, we will be fine. But the people who bought these markets-backed securities happen to be banks, happen to be pension funds. It so happens to be that these very same mortgage-backed securities by the U.S. government have been rated the safest collateral possible, along with the government's own bonds, which means that for decades, everyone and their mother who has been very restricted in what they can buy has been buying this crap, and they're all underwater now. That is the real danger. That's what's going to tear everyone down. And that is why I recommend buying physical gold and silver because you, it's the only thing of which you, which you know holds its value. Yes. I love the shiny. I've got it right here. And and absolutely. Now, Kieran, I just want to say thank. first of all, thank you. This is brilliant work, what you've done here. I, I know you came on this channel last year in May and you mm -hmm. tried to warn people about this. And here it is, the downgrade of everything in there, just like you called a year ago, right? It, it, it it got to the same place, maybe a slightly different route through the through the downgrade, assuming that is what happened of the U.S. credit rating. Uh, where can people follow your work? How can how can they get this? Because I think you are one of the most underrated analysts that's out there. Uh, thank you. Well, uh, I don't do that much financial stuff anymore. This is just, you know, aftercare stuff I've already done. But you can find me on uh, Twitter at Dessa Games. Uh, what I'm doing and at, on Twitch as well as at Desert Games, uh, I stream on Thursdays and Saturdays. Saturdays games, Thursdays finance because I do keep up with the Joneses a little bit. But most of my time is spent working on my company now, Kirian Technologies. You can check it out at kiriantechnologies.com or kirian.tech. Um, we're trying to sell our electric space engine. That's now let's in talk case about you... that for a minute because I I did see your stream when you when you mm -hmm. released that. You have developed a theoretical technology, but the math holds up, where you can create an impulse drive without ejecting any mass out the yes. back of a theoretical spaceship. Well, that's why the the screen is here. It's not that theoretical. I've got a box with components which can build a prototype, but I, my health is really bad. Uh, so I've got long COVID many days. I can't really do stuff. And I am kind of obsessed with something else I absolutely cannot talk about right now. And there's the thing that Tomas, my uh, business partner, Tomas Fontaine, who is a 25-year Silicon vet, Silicon Valley vet. So he left France in the 90s, went to Silicon Valley, survived two tech bubbles, went back to France. He's now starting this business with me. He actually was trained in one of the most elite schools in France back in the day in physics and such. He's done the math. I'm actually not that good at math, but I'm very good instinctually and logically and such. So it is my invention, but he's been doing the math. He's been upgrading the document incessantly because he really wants to, you know, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. But he has not found a single thing that indicates that I'm wrong at all. And he's going to start focusing on sales this week. It has to come from him because oh, I'm autistic. I know how I am. I'm cursed. People don't believe me. Uh, if they don't know me, they don't know how smart I am. So I sound crazy to them. And no matter what I try to do, if I increase more information or increase complexity, I'm just starting to talk in higher and higher dimensions and people lose the plot completely. So he's going to start selling. I'm sure it's going to start going pretty fast. I've already told him to go straight for NASA. I'm absolutely confident that this will work. But uh, yeah. What it basically is, is, um, well, what it says on the tin, I found a way to convert electricity into linear motion. And that allows us to use electricity as fuel for linear motion in space, because we can do it on Earth, you know, an electrical engine, you stick a wheel to it, it moves. I just found a way to do it in outer space. And because space is so huge, you can make use of constant acceleration. But the key there being without ejecting any mass, right? Because in space, right now, all of our technology, the only way we can accelerate is to push something out behind us, right? Mm -hmm. Some force, something to act upon in opposite direction to push us forward. And you found a way to convert electrical energy into kinetic energy without any loss of mass, which is the key to long-term spaceflight. 
without any propellant, without any fuel exhaust or anything like that? Yes, basically. It's not as complex as people think it is. It's going to shock the world once the full tech review gets done. The patent becomes public in March of next year, end of March. So we'll probably do the full tech review before then. Currently, I'm keeping it under NDA because uh, it's more, it's better, easier to sell that way. Because, you know, if somebody contacts me and they put the money down and other people think ah, I's full of shit, well, in five months, people will find out that I'm not full of shit. And then they all want to jump in. But the other company's got five months worth of building advantage then, you know? They already been working through this, accepting that it works for five months and they will have an advantage. But now, any under NDA, any company will just see the math, see the quick guide, and they will even get a description of how to build a quick and dirty prototype. That will cost very little money and will be done very quickly by engineers you have on staff. So we're going to put a link down to your engine. Uh, we'll, we'll put one to the video you did when you released it and any other link to that information down in the description. Let me ask you, will we see a prototype that demonstrates a net force with no loss of mass? Are we going to see one of those soon? Yes. Outstanding. I cannot wait to see that. But uh, I don't know if it will come from me. But because the way I reason is that with a claim like this, it doesn't really matter if I build a prototype. The immediate reaction is going to be, oh, there's, there's, there's a battery somewhere or a wire or they, they use CGI or something. I need independent verification. People will believe independent verification. But, you know, if I make a video, they're just going to say, ah, it's Photoshop. Now, Even Karen, if there I... are people who are going to doubt you because what your technology is promising is the stuff of science fiction. But of anybody course. who watched the first part of this interview who made it through to this point is going to take you seriously because what you found in the mortgage bond market was incredible. And I give you credit. You're the only one who looked mm -hmm. so amazing stuff, folks. Thank that's Kirian Von Hest. I got all kinds of links to his work down below. Check that stuff out. Kirian, I'll give you the last word. Give us, give us some hope, brother. What <laughs> give us something to look forward to. Well, um, my company, I'm going to do my very best to create value. There's only one way to get out of this. We created too much shit. We created too much paper value and not real value. So if you look at the US economy after World War II, the US also had a debt to GDP ratio comparable to what it is now, and it went down. Now, it went down because Europe was bombed out and needed stuff that only America could build. So America gave Europe loans to buy their own stuff and America ended up with everyone's gold. There was a kind of a geopolitical situation that we very much hope will never arise again. But the point remains, you can shrink debt to GDP, even with a stationary monetary base. So as long as you don't add anything, but even if you add a little bit, if you can just come up with something that creates an exceeding amount of value for very cheap, so you don't have to lend yet more money to get it done, you can drop debt to GDP. Because you can grow GDP without growing debt. The space engine is such a thing. It's Creating incredibly value instead of just financializing everything. Yes. It's beautiful in its simplicity, and yet we have just seems to have lost that. And that was a fantastic note to end this interview on. Mm. Thank you so much, Kirian. That was amazing stuff. I wish you all the luck with your engine, and I look forward to hearing more about that in the future. All right, guys. It's a tough it's a a tough sell what's what's ahead of us with the situation in the mortgage bond market. We've seen it before. We got it through it before. Probably not going to be able to get through it the same way we did last time, but there is a way out. Everybody, until next time, live small and dream big. See ya.